Hi, I'm Matt from MicroViews.ca, and this is the Brian Genetic IV or 4 comparison video to the Brian's Optic. So I've had the Optic for a while right now. There's already my reviews on my channel, which you should check out. Um, the Genetics I've only had for about a month and a bit, uh, but so far I have a pretty good idea how I like them and how they feel and play. So I'm going to talk about the differences between the two. Um, so both of these are a 36 plus one. There is a slight difference in the height, as you can see. Um, the interesting thing though is, if I try to get these next to each other, when I'm actually playing, I find that these play a little bit taller and I'll talk about that when we look at um, the back side of the pad because it has some stuff to do with that. Um, but they are pretty close to what they are. Um, I, went, I would say kind of go with the same size that you already were if you have these and you're looking at the next, the genetics. Um, so for weight, I weighed these. And the genetic is, I believe, 5.02 pounds, and this is 5.12 pounds. The optics are five, so a little bit weight difference. I think those are what they are. I have to check my photos, but it's either that or swap. So they're very close to the point where you can't really tell the difference between the two. If you removed all the straps and did a few other few things, you could definitely get the weight down on these. For example, there's lead, like the Gen Pro on the side that you could easily get rid of, and you could just do everything like nylon. I'm not really worried about that, so I kind of went with this. Um, my genetic pads are pretty stock. I'll go over what some of the differences are uh, between non-stock. My optic pads are pretty stock as well. Um, so these comparisons are pretty close to a stock pad as you can get. So looking at them just from the face here, um, the one thing you should notice is kind of the boot. The boot on a normal gen uh, optic fly is 90 degrees. I got mine tapered. It's kind of similar to the taper on the genetic. The genetic's a bit more aggressive than my optic taper is. A bit of a different style of pad. These ones are butterfly, these ones are hybrid, um, so it's a bit softer and stuff like that. For stiffness, I was originally going to get the optic, sorry, the genetic in the optic stiffness because I was a fan of the optic, um, but I didn't and I just went with the stock and I could kind of show you the differences here. So the one big difference is the boot flex. If you look down here, the boot really isn't flexing all that much. Um, the top is a bit, is, is, like this is a fly, so this is supposed to be the stiff one. This is still pretty soft, you can bend it pretty easy. It's not soft soft, but it's also not super stiff either. The one thing about these pads I find interesting is you can feel the foams on the inside kind of moving, like you can feel them sliding when you bend them. Uh, just something I find interesting, you can do it on the genetic as well. But the big thing here is that boot break, and if you notice how that one's kind of stiff, we go to um, the genetic and we'll kind of do it from the side just so it looks the same. If you notice that boot break, much, much softer. So that's the big difference on this pad is that boot break. Um, the thigh rise, I'm gonna flip it over here just so you can see these are, is honestly pretty close. The thigh rise and even the like knee break here feels pretty close to the optic. Now I'm not break, trying to break this in and bend it at all. So I'm sure if you did, you really could, but it does feel pretty close. Like you can feel that the two, like the layers kind of moving with each other there, but it does feel very similar to the optic in regard to up here. It's the boot that's the big difference between the two. Um, so I guess that's about it from this view. All right, so first of all, I'm sorry that the pads are backwards. They're harder to stand up um, in the correct way. And this way they actually just sit here when I talk about them. So I apologize, sex, I know it will bug some people. Anyways, um, so one of the differences if you look on the binding here is the binding on the genetic is more traditional where the optic had the stitching kind of going through the front end where it's not just at the top. I'm not totally positive the reason for this switch. The one thing I did notice is this piece right here is like almost wear. It's not wearing out, but you definitely notice wear on it because that part I find touches the ice quite a bit and as well as that piece right down there. Um, so if you look at the genetic on that same area, you have that one piece right there, but generally this shouldn't really touch the ice that much. This piece should be on there. Um, so it, that's just a kind of a small difference for that. So looking at um, the, the boot itself, this boot is a bit softer than the optic boot. And I showed that with the flex, but also with the actual pad itself, you can kind of see it's a bit more padded. That is a heavier, or not heavier, but it's like, it's almost thinner and a bit stiffer than down here. So the rebounds on here come out a little bit hotter than on the genetic. I personally prefer how the optics are in that regard. Um, but it's personal preference and you kind of like what you like. Um, one thing you can kind of tell here is the, the rolls. Um, so the difference in the rolls, the optic kind of has it in, like a, the roll is kind of built into the side of the pad and it's a little bit lower. I'll show that when we look at the top. 
The genetic is just a standard v, uh, vertical roll. I, you can see all the puck marks down here and kind of up here. I really think that these rolls are still useful, especially if they're angled inwards, kind of like how Bauer does for their new pads. I am a fan of that and I would prefer a roll on my pads going forward. Um, I'm not sure if it's totally necessary, but it's personal preference. And I think you do get a little bit extra, like maybe one or two save a year, saves a year from that roll, just so pucks have a harder time rolling over it. Um, looking at the pad itself, the face of the pad on the genetic is so far to me softer than on the optic. Now that's kind of the point. Um, the genetic is the softer pad. I don't find the optics rebounds to be very big or very crazy. I find like nothing really competes compared to uh, the Bauer lines. Warriors kind of second best there in my opinion and from my experience. These kind of trail that, the optics trail that for sure and the genetics trail that even more. They are pretty soft in terms of rebounds. Personally for me, I would prefer a stiffer face for that regards. I like big reactor rebounds, but the genetic isn't really going all over the place for me. Um, but again, that's all personal preference. I'm just kind of discussing what it is. So next we'll look at kind of the sliding surface. So as you can see on the sides, both of them have the opti slide. The genetics is right, just labeled right here, where the optics is labeled right there. Um, this is a great idea using this Primo material. Vaughn now uses this material. It's fantastic. I think these are the best sliding pads I've ever used. Um, actually that I've ever used. I think they slide better than the 1S, the 2S Pro, and the 1X. Um, so this material really works and this design really, really works. I'm a big fan of what Brian's is doing here. There are some exposed uh, nylon pieces here and you can kind of see somewhere here, which I wish they covered up and kind of did a more of a design like this where the binding is kind of on the back. Um, it's again, same here with the new genetics. So it's pretty similar. But you can kind of see a slight, in my opinion, you can see a difference between this, the optic and the genetic, kind of how this is just designed. It's, a, it's kind of more traditional and less boxy compared to the optic. The wing itself, though, is pretty much, is pretty similar. I like how they got rid of the binding down here, whereas it exists here for the optic. So it's a nice addition, addition on the genetic. So we'll flip these around very quickly. And so right here, um, another difference, as you can see, is the knee block. So the knee block on the optic comes out and is angled inwards, where the genetic is just straight out. Um, I think they're the same size. I haven't taken a, ru a ruler to them or anything, but just looking at them, they look pretty similar. And actually, we can just kind of stick them on top of each other and find out. And they look pretty similar to me. So the actual knee blocks are the same size. So you just don't have, or close, they just don't have that angle on the optic. I haven't had an issue with the genetics getting in the way at all, the knee blocks. So this is kind of a personal preference thing. The 1X has a knee block kind of like this compared to that. Um, but yeah, so that's about the same for this side of the pad, or that's about it for this side of the pad. You can kind of just see the thigh rises are pretty close. They're basically the same width. Um, so it's kind of, I don't know if it's a similar core, but to me it feels pretty close in that regards. Um, so we'll flip it on the other side. So on the outside of the pad, this is kind of just personal preference stuff. So things that you, um, like you customize for colors and stuff like that, right? Nothing crazy here. Uh, I'll kind of talk about the cap wrap when we go on the other view of the pad. So the thing I did want to point out here, which you can see, but I need to flip this over. Is, so here is what I was talking about for the outer roll. So you can definitely see the thickness difference in the outer roll, the genetic compared to the optic. Now, the interesting thing about this is I have been finding that my genetics hit each other in the butterfly and reverse VH more often than the optics, but you know, the outer roll isn't actually ever like used in that sense if you think about it, because that should never be uh, okay. Like, I I guess this part does get in the way a little bit, but I don't I'm not sure why. Um, I think it's more to just do how it's slightly curved compared to the optic, but I have been noticing overlapping, hitting the overlap. I'm not, I guess this is making a difference. I'm kind of surprised it is because it's not a huge difference between the two. They're like of slightly different size, but I notice, I definitely notice it more with the genetic and it's something that I have to adapt to and I'm kind of working on adapting that. Um, so if you take a look right here, hopefully this shows up right. So the, the pad 
that roll actually comes below the pad. So the pad's entire face is kind of cut out and this roll comes all the way down. So you can't, like that's kind of the best way to, to see it. You can kind of see a little bit right there. Um, so whereas the genetic is all the way across, so that's, and then the roll is built on top of the pad itself. So that's how you get that difference in size there. All right, so we'll flip it on to the back and we'll look at the toe ties. So the toe ties on the genetics are, is Brian's new smart strap system, which is just a bungee cord. Um, I like these so much that I went out and bought another pair of bungee cords for my optics. So the optic one was their older smart strap, which has this longer piece of elastic um, that just Velcros together. It's, it works, it definitely does its job. This one's just easier. Um, I find this one easier. It just fits nicer, it's quicker. Um, one thing I did find is this thing is kind of annoying to get through the front of a skate of my a true skate. This one is smaller, so it's not that big as big of an issue. But again, they both work similar. They do a good job. One thing I want to say is when you do the for the genetics. So this one I went through the front loop, then the middle loop, then on top on my laces. This one I was worried about this being too tight, so I put it just through the front loop, put it or put it just through the middle loop, and then put it on top of my skate, and that was causing the pad to slide up all the time because this toe tie wasn't tight enough which I then use the bootstrap, which I've then taken off right here. And the bootstrap, I use, uh, so here's the bootstrap, which I took off. I'll be taking this one off once I switch these laces too, uh, or sorry, the bungee cord. I did it really tight to keep the knee where it was supposed to be because I kept sliding, or the knee kept sliding too high. I kept falling below the block. Um, so once I did this through the front and the middle, everything was fine. Don't need that bootstrap, pads not sliding anywhere. Everything works well, but it was just an adjustment period that I wasn't totally ready for. Um, so just be wary of that in, if you get these and you kind of do this a little loose, I think you should just do it tight and leave it be. I'm pretty sure that's how it's designed to be. I wasn't sure and I did to loose and here we are. So anyways, moving on. So if you look at the back side here, very similar Primo with, uh, so it's a bit, it feels a bit softer on the genetic and kind of all the way around. And you can kind of see there's more padded up here compared to over here on, the optic is a bit like thinner out on the boot compared to the genetic. Genetic's more kind of a traditional boot, but you have the Primo where your foot lands, which is nice for added uh, durability, but they're pretty similar. Um, optic feels a little bit harder, genetic's a little softer, but again, pretty common, pretty similar. So now looking at the strapping system, um, the genetic does come with this strap that goes right here and it goes right into here. I took it off, I didn't I see many people wearing them and I wanted to try this way, so I just did. Um, so that's kind of it for that. So I'll kind of turn this on the side. This outer wrap or wing is pretty similar to the genetics. It's pretty close in terms of depth of where it is on the pad. Um, but the one, but this one's kind of not used for straps on the optic where the genetic it is your main strap. So I'll open that up and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So for the optic, that piece just sits on this outer flap, which connects to the opti slide, so the landing zone, but it's very loose and your actual strapping is more or less in this X strap, smart strap in there. Whereas the optic, sorry, the genetic, you open this up and that is the strap. Um, so this is the only one really connecting your leg. I actually really like how the genetic one is. I find it works pretty well. It's really quick and easy. Op optic is a little bit more uh, cumbersome. It's a little, but it, it's, they fit differently, a bit differently, and they play a bit differently, which I'll go over as well. But I'm a, kind of a fan of how this genetic one works, works in that regard. So when we do open that up, it gives you a look of the actual inside, specifically like the calf landing. So if I tuck that away and tuck that away. so. One of the crazy things about the optics and one of the things I said they were kind of cheating with was this calf pillow. So this calf pillow basically raises your calf up off the ice and off the, the like opti slide and like the calf wing. Um, so it's like it seals the ice really, really well because of this. It doesn't have to, your leg doesn't totally have to be on the ice for this to kind of push it down. It does a really good job. And then you have the outer kind of the inner wrap right there. So the genetic doesn't really have that calf pillow as you can see but it does have a thicker like uh, kind of calf wing and it is padded, it's very comfortable, very nice. I love the added Primo on it. Um, 
this is I find that these don't seal quite as well as the optics do they I find these fit a bit tighter to your leg and closer to your leg they're they feel like a bit more of a reactive pad kind of like the SLRs I wore which fit really tight to the leg um, but they're, they're not I'm not saying they're bad by means these are still one of the better sealing pads I've worn they seal better than my one X's do um, they seal better than the Warriors. I find they do a pretty good job, just not as an amazing job as the Optics do. It's a personal preference thing. I definitely find I'm more a bit mobile with these, uh, with the genetics compared to the Optics, so it's kind of a trade-off. Um, so just to show off how the straps are done in here, the outer strap, you have this uh, kind of, what is this, buckle? Or, I can't remember what that's called. But anyway, you have that right there, and the inner ones, you have straps down here to the inner wing. For the uh, genetic, it's straight simpler with just these right here. Um, when we open up, so when we open up this giant X strap, I'll take this one off too as well. Kind of open up on the inside, you see a nice X static material. Um, it's kind of like a, a nicer nylon down here. It's supposed to be, I think, uh, bacterial resistant. So it's nice down there. It's soft. It's a nice material. Um, but when you get inside the genetic, you have this Nash and this mesh uh, material. And this is, um, I find this really comfortable and really nice. This is one of the nicer kind of calf pillows or sorry, shin pillows and like padding in here. Really, really nice. Feels really high end, feels like luxurious. Um, it's not, a, I don't think it really adds anything in terms of performance or anything like that, but it does a really good job and it's comfortable. If you want to save weight, I'm sure you could rip this out and just put a normal nylon in there, but I like this, I'm a fan of it. I like what uh, Brian's is doing. He's kind of giving you two options for that. It does carry on the knee, but I'll switch, flip the pads around to kind of show you that part on the knee itself. So that's about it for, I guess, the like the strapping and everything down here. So I'll flip them over so we can get a better view of the knee blocks. So if we take a look here, the knee blocks to me are, they feel kind of similar um, in regards to like, just how thick they are and everything like that. The one thing about, so the one thing about the uh, genetic is, I, I, it might be because I was falling out of the actual knee block and landing below. My knees really hurt when I wore these like four times in three days. They're fine now, but it was kind of sore after that. So I'm not totally sure if that was because of this or what. Uh, but anyway, so we look at the knee cradle for the genetic and the optics. And this is where I personally had some modifications done. So uh, this little calf wing usually is right here and removable on the optics. I put it to the outside so I'd have a bit more room for bigger knee pads. Um, on the genetic, it's normally right here. Again, I got them to move it a little bit on the outside um, just so I have a bit more room for my knee pads. I use this strap on the optic. It's totally useless. I might as well take it off now. This strap for the X, uh, the X strap does the job and that's really all I need for the optic. Where the genetic, I use this strap up to here, just because I've always had issues when I put it below um, with my one X's, and I haven't really tried it with this one yet, but I had issues with my knee kind of sliding out. This one just keeps it nice and tight. It's a nice thick strap, and it does a good job. So as you can see, you got a little bit of padding on the inside. The optic actually feels a bit softer, but I'm not sure if that's because it's worn in more or not, but it's just a normal nylon with some graphic in there. There's a bit of texture and a bit of grip. Um, whereas you've got a nice mat or a Nash kind of material down here and it's, it's a little bit padded, but it's, it's a firm padding. Um, personal preference. I don't know which one I like more yet. I like the, the feel to my skin on this, but my skin never touches that. It's knee pads and socks. So I can't really comment on that much. So the next thing is this area right here, just normal nylon. As you can see, you flip the, the genetic and you got this interesting kind of textured um, like 3D knee block. So instead of just being flat, you have kind of these raised parts on it. I'm not totally sure what the point of that is. They do kind of squish when you push into it. So maybe it's still for some extra comfort and padding. Um, I think it feels really luxurious and really nice. I like the use of Nash everywhere. I find it really nice and comfortable, um, but it does weigh a bit more. So if you want to kind of lose the weight, you can always go just normal nylon in that regards. So I think that about sums it up on these pads. Um, I believe I covered everything I wanted to do, which is totally, honestly the second time I'm filming this video. The first time my camera died in the middle of it, so I 
kind of just start it again from scratch. Um, one, oh, one thing I forgot to mention that's not super important is on the outside of these pads, you can see like Genetic has this interesting mesh material um, that they use to wrap, that's like their genetic mesh. I'm not, it's not genetic mesh. I don't know exactly what it's called, but Optic has their kind of mesh on the outside as well. It's just uh, what's there. I, I'm sure you could get it removed if you really wanted to. I didn't. Um, one thing Optic advertises as is the torsion flex. So it's how the pad like flexes this way. Um, I found, so if I put this flat and I twist it, it does definitely twist. But if I put this flat, I can definitely twist it. So I'm not sure if the torsion flex on the uh, uh, genetic is actually better than on the optic, but it is what it is. Oh, finally, one thing, sorry, one thing I forgot, almost forgot is I mentioned before how um, Brian's pads are pretty soft and they can flex kind of horizontally. Um, so they can, right? So as you can see, they can flex like that. In fact, this pad is kind of flexed in a little bit on the thigh rise. I don't put my hands on my uh, glove, like my gloves on my hands to flex them. I'm pretty sure this is from pucks and just usage. So as you can see, it kind of flexes like that. It's one of the my kind of disappointing parts of this pad. Um, I mentioned it in the review. I'm a bit worried about it for longevity, but it is what it is. So the genetics is the same thing. So it still has that flex. So it is a soft horizontal pad. Um, I am finding more companies are doing that to kind of shave weight. The thinner the core is, the less weight there is, but it also makes it less stiff across it. So that's about it for this video. I think I covered everything. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or reach out to me. Um, thank you very much for watching. I have a comparison video for the blocker and the catching glove at the end of this and also in the description. description so check those out. Um, I think that's about it. So remember, I hate to say this, remember to subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, helps me get gear and get demo gear so I can do reviews and talk about gear like kind of like this video. Um, and if you ever make a purchase, don't make a purchase uh, because of one of my videos or, or because of me, please reach out to the companies on social media and just mention it. it just gets me some more exposure so I can talk about gear. Um, again, kind of like this. And so I can go over things and do some reviews for people just because I'm not that big and everything helps. So thank you very much for watching and take it easy.